Hey everybody, Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. Welcome to another edition of our Saturday Synopsis. Today is Saturday, February 12th, 2022. What do we do here at the Saturday Synopsis? We look at charts. That's what we do. That's all that we do. We try to figure out what's been happening in the market and what's going to happen in the market by use of looking at the charts. That's called technical analysis. We look at support and resistance levels. We look at indicators, technical indicators they're called moving averages, RSIs, just lots of good stuff. And we, we use those things to try to help us figure out where our stock may be headed next. And, you know, nothing's 100%. It's not foolproof. So take everything with a grain of salt because it's not guaranteed. And But I've been doing this for 30 years, and it, and it served me pretty well. And the reason why technical analysis works is because you got millions and millions of millions of people playing in the market every day and then patterns develop over time. Human nature doesn't change. So people react to the market in the same way over time and you'll see patterns develop. So those are the things we look for. These are the clues and cues that we look for to help us figure out, you know, where a stock is going to move once it hits a certain level or bounces off a of support or if it's where it is in, in conjunction with a moving average. So these are all the things that we use to try to help us figure out how to, how to make better trades. Okay. So let's jump right in and we look at charts. We look at, we'll look at the indexes. We look at individual charts and see what, what's been happening. Now, if you're, if you're a pretty, um, you know, a healthy watcher of the markets or you're, you're in all the time and you're watching it on a daily basis, you're probably in tune with what's been happening. Okay. So there's a lot of news out there. News certainly sways the market. There's no doubt about that. Big global headline news events will sway the market. But in the long run, we're talking in the long run over years, the fundamentals of those companies that make up the market. Yes, there's actual companies that make up the stock market. And these companies sell actual products and create actual profits. So over time, as long as companies are profitable, the stock prices will go up. So we follow the S&P 500, we follow the NASDAQ, we follow the Dow Jones. Those are the three main stock indexes here in the United States. So we follow those. And over time, those will go up over time because companies are profitable over time. But in the short run, we're talking day, you know, days, hours, minutes, weeks. The market is erratic. And, and it's very hard to predict where a stock is going to go on a very short term. So if you're trading short term, you better be sure that you're really good at picking a stock's direction. But over the long run, we know that the stock market will go up over time. So that's the things that that's the thing that I that I, that I try to focus on in the long run. But in our in our services here, we have two newsletters, so we're more of a shorter term. But our typical hold time is about one to three months, and I think that gives us just enough time to figure out where a stock might be headed. But we use that short time with a lot of cushion for directional error. That's how we play. When we, our newsletters, we sell options. We sell put options, we sell put option spreads. And that allows us to have a lot of cushion for directional error because in the short run, you're going to be wrong sometimes. Okay, so you wanna give yourself some cushion. So let's take a look at what's happening. So if you've been following the market, you know we've been getting these down moves, these really sharp, nasty down moves, these one, two good day down moves that, that are pretty scary. You know, it scares people out of their long positions. It scares people out of buying, you know, sh call options because they're bullish and you can lose a lot of money. If you're trying to, if you're trying to bet on short term direction, like one week options or, you know, one day options, it's very hard to make money on those things. You may get lucky every once in a while, but if you're going to do it for the long run, it's really hard to do. And if, like I said, if you're going to do that, make sure you know what you're doing and make sure you, you got a good idea where a stock's going to move to. But so let's take a look at what's happening in the overall market. We look at the SPY, the SPY, some people call it. This is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. It trades just like a stock, get in and out. And it's a real good barometer of the overall market. And, and people love to trade this thing. And it has options on it. So it's it's a real good instrument to trade. So on when we're looking at stocks, we, we always have, you'll see some patterns drawn on the charts, some lines drawn on the charts. Typically, here's this is what's called a channel pattern, these two blue lines here. It tells us which way the stock's moving. And, and it shows us the the resistance levels and the support levels. Resistance levels is along the top, support levels is along the bottom. And you'll see that the uh, the stock prices can move in and out of the channels and in and 
in and above out sorry above and below moving averages what are moving averages well we've got these three lines on here i have a 20 day a 50 day and a 200 day moving average moving averages help you it helps smooth out the moves of the market and it, and it shows you which direction the market's been going are, are the moving averages up sloping or are they down sloping up sloping moving averages tend to let you know that a stock or the overall market has been going in one direction and down here we have the RSI indicator right here. RSI, it's a 14 day and it's an overbought, oversold indicator. It's just an idea to let you know that, hey, you know, this index or this individual stock may be getting into some overbought areas or into some oversold areas. It doesn't mean that the turn is going to happen right then and there. It just lets you know that things are getting a little overheated or, or well oversold. And on the RSI, I use the 80 level this ver this horizontal line here and the 20 level to let me know when things are really overbought or really oversold. Now you can adjust those to your liking. It's completely up to you. And up top here, like I said, we have a 200 day, a 50 day and a 20 day simple moving average. You can use any moving averages you want, but these are very widely followed. So if you use widely followed indicators, that means everyone's looking at the same thing. And if people know what they're looking at, the moves are going to be the same at the same time. So it's good to follow things that a lot of other people follow because you can kind of trust that everyone's going to react sort of in the same way when, when the stock prices hit certain levels. Okay, so let's take a look at what's happening. Now you can see over the long run, the S&P 500 has just been going up nicely. Since we hit the, the pandemic low in March of 2020, we've, we've just been going higher. Now that's a combination of the central banks around the world keeping interest rates very, very low over that period of time. And um, the narrative out there now, the news stories out there now, of course, is that the central bank in, in the United States is going to start raising interest rates because inflation is getting really high. We, we all know inflation, the numbers came out the end of last week. Inflation's at 7.5% over the last year, meaning prices for everything as aggregate is costing 7.5% more than it did this, this time last year. That's a huge, huge move. In the United States, the Federal Reserve really likes to ha have inflation running around 2%. So it's well over that threshold, but we, but the, but interest rates needed to be kept so low to keep a, you know, a floor under the market. So everything wasn't going to crash. And that's just how it works. You know, the, the federal reserve keeps interest rates low, inflation starts to go up. And then eventually the fed has to start raising interest rates, which is where we're at right now. The, the, the signal is, is that sometime in March, the Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates. And, and, and typically that is, is a bearish indicator for the stock market because as interest rates go up, people will pull their money out of stocks and put it into fixed income securities. And that's, that's in the theory, okay? Now, over long, long term, we know that, let me move myself over here for a second, pull back to the monthly chart. We can get a real long-term gauge here of the stock market. Now, interest rates go up and down over years, but in the long run, the stock market will go up over time. It will, because that's as long as companies are still creating profits, their stock prices have to go up. So we hit the, the financial crisis low in 2008, 2009. Yes, interest rates were, were being held down there too. But that's not the only reason why stock prices go up. Companies still are creating profits. That's the main reason why prices will go up in addition to the Fed keeping interest rates low. But it's not the only reason why stock prices go up. So where we are now is that we know the Fed's going to start raising interest rates, inflation. We have the geopolitical concerns of, of a possible Russia invasion into Ukraine that scares people. You know, any kind of wars will always scare people. And, and, and what happens is that people end up selling stocks. So here's what happened, and, and here's the chart. You know, here's a daily chart that I look at. Each bar, each line you see here is one day's worth of trading. So you can see we've had this nice run up, and, and, and the ranges were not that big. You know, the bar, the top of the bar, and the bottom of the bar is the high and the low of the day. That shows you the intraday trading range. And you can see when we get into times of volatility, you can see the ranges get very wide, very long. You'll see long bars here. That means there's very high and low intraday moves during the day, back and forth, up and down. That means volatility is going up. That means people are getting concerned. They're selling, they're buying. They're not really sure what's happening. 
there's lots of indecision out there, right? So here we were, you know, about a week or so ago, we had all this activity, big moves, but we didn't really go anywhere. We went up, down, up, down. We had the breakthrough. And this past week, we were looking pretty good. We were above the 200-day moving average. But Friday, yesterday, February 11th, we ended up down on the near the lows of the day. A lot of selling came in um, throughout the day, and we we ended up closing below the 200-day moving average. So this is the 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 S and P 500. So you know where do we stand in our newsletters? We've we've the last two weeks we've been sort of sitting on the sidelines because we weren't really sure which way the market wanted to go. Okay, when you get these periods of indecisions, it's smart to kind of sit things out, be lighter on your positions because the market hasn't really made a decision yet, right? And so even though this was constructive and I've written to my newsletter readers, it was constructive that the S&P 500 popped above the 200-day moving average. It was all down here below and it popped above it when we were trading above the 200-day moving average, all this activity here, that was constructive, but I still wasn't convinced that the selling was over yet. So we kept our positions light, still holding on to the few positions that we have. And it's a good thing that we did because the market has sold off again and we've now moved back down below the 200-day moving average. It's a very important number, the 200-day moving average. So we want to see what's going to happen. Of course, up front is all these news items. You know, that's the biggest thing that's happening right now. Also, we have earnings coming out. There's been sort of a mixed bag. Some some companies have good earnings, some companies not so good earnings. And you'll see the reaction, stocks getting hit pretty hard, or some stocks are jumping. You had Disney jumped uh, on their earnings. Google jumped on their earnings. Amazon jumped on their earnings. But s- companies like Netflix and Facebook the, the, they dumped. So it can be a mixed bag, but it depends overall how of all these 500 stocks in the S&P 500 will dictate which way the, the general market will move. But as of yesterday, Friday, February 11th, there was too much selling. So where does that put us? Well, it puts us back below the 200-day moving average. We're still sort of on the sidelines. Since we're bullish in our newsletters are more bullish, we want to wait for you know more bullish conviction. That's why we're sort of on the sidelines, because I'm not convinced yet the market's ready to turn back higher. It was constructive here, this this activity here, but, you know, it got hit again. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ, because that really pushes a lot of things. You got a lot of these tech stocks that can only a handful of stocks can move the whole market. You know, they're weighted higher within the index. So big moves in these big behemoths. Um, can really move the market. Now, the, the NASDAQ never got really back above the 200-day moving average like the S&P 500 did. So that was kind of telling. You know, I wanted to see all the indexes, including the Dow, above the 200-day. But what you'll see is we had the activity down here, and then last week we, we were able to get up towards the 200-day, but didn't didn't stay above it more than this one day here. Which day was that? Let me take a look here. This day was... Uh, February 2nd. So early in February, we got above it, but came right back down below. And you'll see how Wednesday and Thursday this past week, the the QQQ touched, or just barely nicked the 200-day moving average, but could not get above it. And it was it acted like resistance. It was like a wall that it couldn't get through, and it got knocked back down. Big down day yesterday, Friday, February 11th down here, finished on the lows. How do I know? Because you get a little dash mark on the, on this right side of the bar here that tells us where it closed for the day. So it closed very weak, very weak, and big moves down. So we've had this ca- kind of cascading move down since January 1st, had a little reaction bounce, but it's continuing to move down again. It found resistance right at the 200-day moving average. So where does that leave us? Where does that leave the market? Well, it leaves us on the defensive right now. That's basically where we are. We're on the defensive. The next line in the sand is this low mark right here, this one day down move right here. So here's the next level that if, you know, the sellers come in hot next week, they're going to be gunning for this low right here, which is probably 330 something on the QQQ. I can, I can tell you exactly what the number is. The low of the day was uh, $334 roughly. Uh, so 
And we're at 347 right now. So about 13 more points to the downside could be the target. And we could see more downside. The RSI, the RSI is, you know, sort of in the middle here. It's not overbought, not oversold. So that means more selling could come in. We could have more selling come in next week. We could even break through these lows and continue on down. Where the next stop is, hard to say. You have to start looking backwards to other res other support areas. Where would the next support be? Could be right around here. We had some lows here. Could be in this triangle area. So, um, you know, more selling might come in. And, and, and what's going to stop it from keep falling? Or what's going to bring it back up? Where's the support going to come in? Um, you know, things like um, maybe resolution with Russia and Ukraine could can kind of ease people's minds. Uh, hearing from the Fed, what are they going to do? You know, inflation, are prices coming down? Is the, are the supply chains around the world starting to open up? You know, the, all these things are on people's minds. These are the forefront. And this is what can direct prices for a period of time. So... I'm not convinced the selling is over yet. I, I really don't want to see selling because we're bullish and I'm bullish and I have long-term holdings for my retirement. So I'd rather see the market go up. But you have to understand what the market is telling you. You have to watch the price action. You know, if you're a short-term trader, you have to watch the price action. Right now, the price action is telling us it's kind of weak. You know, the sellers probably have the upper hand here. Let's go back to the SPY. And, it, and it's really important to concentrate on the indexes. The SPY broke down below the S&P, the 200 day moving average. So you really want to see if, if it will continue down or it, it can muster some strength and move back up. So we're really out of tug of war here. Let's look at the Dow. The Dow Jones represented by the DIA. These are the diamonds they're called. So now the Dow has been a lot more flat than the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. These have only got 30 stocks in the index. These are really old time stalwarts. And so the moves aren't as dramatic. You can see it's been kind of sideways. So if you've been playing the Dow stocks, you really haven't been um, in too much anxiety because the moves have been a little bit more flat. Um, but overall, you know, the Dow finished below the 200 day moving average as well yesterday, Friday. February 11th. So I, I think near term, we may see some more selling come into the overall market. Now, individual stocks move a lot more than the index itself, because when you have an index of a lot of stocks, one down move in one stock can be buffered by, you know, an up move by another stock. So the index is a little more smooth, but you have the individual stocks that can get hit a lot harder. So let's take a look at some individual companies and see what's been happening um, this past week. And, and where we may go. We always start with the biggies. We look at the biggies because that's where most a lot of people are interested in a lot of people trade. So let's take a look at Apple. We always look at Apple. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of these tech stocks had down moves this week. Uh, you know, you'll see some of these channels that I've drawn patterns. Here's a W pattern down channel here, up channel, up channel, sideways channel. These are things you want to try to see where the market action is. Where's the price action what's the tape telling you these are all words that describe you know which direction is the market going or the stock going now apple is sort of in the the last thing we drew was apple sort of been in this sideways channel had a little upwards triangle here um, but but it fell through and then it quickly popped back above it so it has the support let me move myself over here a little bit it has a support right around this one, you know, low one. Um, the price is about 167 or so. That's where this blue support line here. So the support is right around 167 or so. We want to see if it can hold there. Here's the 200-day moving average. So Apple is still well above the 200-day moving average. RSI is not overbought, not oversold, sort of in the middle. So Apple is, you know, kind of being contained here. N nothing huge one way or the other. Um, but you know, in order for the, the market to go up, a big company like Apple, which has a lot of weight in the index, we it, it'll move the market. So if Apple starts to trade higher, if it could bounce off the support, it can pull the rest of the market up with it. Apple's, you know, we know Apple, it's a, it's a strong stock, great for the long run, and you'll get the pullbacks. Is that a buying opportunity for you? Maybe if Apple is a long-term hold for you. If you're trading it short-term, it all depends what where you're getting in and out. 
I mean, if you sold, if you bought some puts here or sold short stock, you could have bought it back here and locked in a gain. If you bought call options here or bought stock here, you're not, you're not feeling too good. It all depends on what your outlook is and how long your outlook is for. Okay, so let's look at Amazon. Amazon had the great earnings. Um, it went from here all the way up to here, you know, rather like four or $500 a share. And, but, but it wasn't immune to the last couple of days of selling. So here are the second half of the week, and this is where it finished yesterday. So um, Amazon, in the, in the long run, is still kind of contained in this big wide channel here. Pop back up, but has fallen down the last couple of days. So Amazon's still just kind of chugging along in this, this sideways action here. Google, we'll look at the biggies. We'll look at the biggies. Google also had a massive move higher after earnings, but has been coming down. Now, Google announced their 20 for one split, which is great. We love that because the stock is so expensive. Once it splits, it's not going to split until the summer sometime, but once it splits, it makes it a lot cheaper. That makes it accessible to more people and, the, and, and people will start to buy because they can now because it's a lot cheaper. doesn't mean Google's changed in any way. The company itself hasn't changed. It just means it's a lot cheaper and more people can get involved. So that can help the company share price go up over time. But what typically happens is a lot of times you'll get these, what's called the PEAD, the post earnings announcement drip, which means an, a, a stock will have a great move up, have a, a gap higher, and then it'll slowly drip, 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 drip down again until it closes the gap. The, you'll, hear, you'll see this a lot also after a company announces a split. It pulls back. So is this a good buy area for Google? Well, it, you know, it's sitting right on the 200-day the moving average support. It's still a very expensive stock, you know, almost $2,700 a share. Who can afford that? If you buy one share, that's $2,700. So it'll be nice after you get the split. We'll see where the price is at that point. And, you know, it should start to go back up after the split because more people can afford it now. But in terms of where it, where Google is, as far as the market itself goes, you know, it's come back down to the 200 day moving average. That is a, that is a biggie. That's a biggie. Will it find support here? It can, if the rest of the market starts to go up along with it. So we're, we're still sort of in this wait and see mood mode. Um, you know, we're not short sellers. We don't play bearish trades. I, I've never really found a lot of success making short-term bearish trades. So I don't play the short side. I wait to get in again on the long side. Sometimes that means sitting around and, and, and not doing anything, unfortunately. I know a lot of people like to have a lot of action and get in there and click the mouse and make trades because how else am I going to make money if I don't make trades? Well, you know, you can end up losing a lot of money just because you want to make a trade doesn't mean it's going to be a good trade. So we have the patience. We have to have the patience if we're in the long side of the market. We need to see the price action moving up again. That's just what we do. And if we have to sit on our hands in cash, well, that's what we do. Well, that's what I do, at least. Um, let's see. What other stocks? Uh, let's look at Tesla. Tesla's been pretty volatile of, of late as well. Um, still holding above the 200-day moving average. Uh, but sort of in this downtrending channel we drew a while ago. It's in this downtrending channel. You can see when it gets up to the top, it sort of gets knocked back down. So if we extend this line, here's what we can do. Let's take this out. And you can always add longer lines as, as the stock ends up, you know, moving along. So you can connect the bottoms here. And so now Tesla has this. Here's the, the bottom leg of the support. And it bounced off of that, went up, hit the the downtrending 20 day moving average and it's starting to move back down again. Can it bounce off the 200 day or will it bounce off the, the bottom leg of the support line here yet to be seen, or maybe it'll just rally back up. So these are the things you kind of want to look at. So if I was to make a, you know, if, I, if someone's holding, holding a gun to my head and say, you have to make a decision on where Tesla's is going, I'd say it's going to keep moving in a down fashion. I mean, that's just the way it's moving right now. So you want to draw these trend lines to show you which way the price action is leading. And until it's broken, until, you know, Tesla, we can, we can draw another line here. We can draw a new line and, you know, you kind of connect, like you try to connect as many um, top lines as you can, top bars as you can. So it's not going to be always so pretty. It's not going to be exact. Okay. But it's in this kind of wide channel here. 
And it may rally back up, but it may hit resistance here and then get knocked back down. It's hard to say. Until it moves outside and up above the, the channel, that's when you can be more assured that you're making higher probability bullish trades. So these are the things we look for. All right. So um, let's look at Microsoft. Another biggie out there. Um, you know, it's been a very strong stock. Let's just, you know, you want to you want to pull back to the long term. You want to see where the stock's been moving. OK, it's been in a nice uptrend, but it's been starting to pull back and it's coming on support of the 200 day moving average yesterday. Here's where it finished right here. OK, closed just below it. It's not really overbought, not really oversold. So maybe we'll find some support here and Microsoft will start to move back up again. Once again, you can you can draw current you can draw current action. OK, this is just rough estimates. You know, here's here's what what's been happening. It fell down below it, but quickly bounced back. So it's sort of in this downtrending channel until it moves out and above, you know, up around here and starts to move higher. That's when you can get into more higher probability bullish trades. It's tempting to pick bottoms. It's always tempting to pick bottoms. But more often than not, that one bottom might not hold and it can continue down. Right. What if you thought this was a short term bottom here and you bought and you're like, yeah, I'm making money. Uh, I'm not making money. I'm making money. And then eventually it starts to move a lot lower than your buy in point here. So you want to watch the price action when the, when Microsoft was moving up, you can buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here. If that's your short, if you're a shorter term trader. But if you bought here, if you just bought some stock down here, you're still making a lot of money. You know, this is where it is now. This is a lot higher than it was here. So it depends on what your time frame is. You know, for me, I'm longer term, years and years and years. So if I'm buying Microsoft, I'm holding. Yes, I have to weather these storms. But I know in the long run, the stock market's going to move higher again. In the short run, if that's your type of trading, you got to figure out which way the stock's going to move in the short run. That's really hard to do. AMD. We always talk about AMD. Got whacked really hard yesterday. I'm personally long AMD. I like AMD as a company in the long run. But it, it lost about $13 a share yesterday. I mean, look at this long day right here. But, you know, look where it is. It's, it's coming on support of the upsloping 200-day moving average. Um, you know, I had mentioned in the last two weeks, I had bought AMD shares between 110 and 100 Right in here was my buy area. I was feeling pretty good. It got back above this resistance line just the other day. Here it was Wednesday, got up above it. And then the last two days, it, it gave up, you know, $20 a share. That's a big move for AMD. Uh, you know, I, I have to hold. I'm holding because I'm long-term bullish on AMD and I have to weather the storms. You know, I'm not immune either. I'm not immune either if if I, I've got bullish positions, so I have to ride it out. Big companies like Adobe and NVIDIA, we'll take a look at those. These are big moves. Adobe's making got a new, a new low here. The last one was back in May. Adobe was hitting $700 a share, and now it's moving down to, you know, $475. That's a, that's a big move. That's $225 you know, of, 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 of losses right there per share. So if you're playing with these higher price stocks, you got to be able to weather the storm. Uh, NVIDIA, you know, these are the expensive stocks. Uh, 350 all the way down to almost 200. You know, that's a big move. But I like this little action right here. You know, we've come down and you can you can draw your you can draw your channels here. You got the low edge. You got the, the big edge, the top edge here. So, you know, NVIDIA looks like it's actually on the way up. Um, what other stocks do we want to talk about? Disney. Disney had great earnings popped here. This is where it finished before earnings and then it opened up here. But, but with the sell off in the market, it's pulling back. You got a company with great earnings that's pulling back. It, it, is that a buying opportunity, you know, for you? If you have a company with great earnings, that's just getting caught up with the, the mood of the market, right? Everyone's selling. So Disney's being sold off in sympathy. So if you were upset that you, you didn't buy before the great earnings, you know, maybe here's an opportunity for you to get in at near $150 a share. It's up to you. It's up to you. We know Disney's a great company. 
Um, but you know, it's since uh, March of 2021, it really hasn't done all that much. It's just kind of gone sideways and down. So, you know, you have to decide if Disney's a good long-term hold for you. Um, what else do we have here? Let's take a look at some other other shares, other companies. If my thing will, let's take a look at some other companies here in the list. Um, Nike, another another stalwart. Um, you know, everyone knows Nike, greatest brand on the planet, probably coming off. Is this a buying opportunity at one hundred and forty dollars a share? Uh, it could be, could be. It hasn't, you know, it's got this, it's got this gap right here still to fill down to about, you know, 133, 134 here. Um, will it drop below the support of 140? Could long term. Are you bullish on um are you bullish on Nike long term? Let's take a look at the long term chart. I mean, look at Nike. Look at this nice. Okay, pulling back. Is it is it a buy here at 140? Here's 140 pulling up right to the 20 period moving average right here. Will it find support? These are the things you have to look for. Okay. So let's move back to the daily, move this over. Let's, um, look at some other individual stocks. What else do we have? Oracle. I mean, you'll see a lot of stocks moving down. Maybe, maybe you just want to keep sitting it out. Um, okay. So Netflix still, we'll look at Netflix and Facebook and, and let's look at Walmart as well. So Netflix had the move down after earnings, had the sympathy bounce. Look, it got so, so, so oversold, had to bounce, had to bounce. And it bounced about a hundred dollars a share bounced from three fifty back up to four fifty for a normal stock. hundred dollars a share would be, is a huge move. And then it's come back down again with the rest of the market sitting right around 400, a little below 400. You know, do you want to try to bottom pick here? I don't know. Maybe you buy yourself a couple shares if you think it, it's a bottom. Facebook, same thing. Facebook got whacked as well. Big down move. Big down move. Sort of got oversold. Not not to my level, though. Um, and it's had a little bit of a bounce, but now it's come back down again. You know, it's 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 really tempting to, to pick bottoms here. And you want to tell your friends, yeah, I got in at the bottom. But you know, if it keeps going down, you're not going to be too happy about it, especially in the climate we're in now where everything's starting to sell off. You may want to hold off on trying to pick bottoms here. Um, what else? Let's look at Walmart because I'm a fan of Walmart in the long run as well. I bought some more shares um, just yesterday near 135 level because that's where the support is. You want to look back and see where longer term support is. To me, that's around 135. I'm not going all in. As I say, I'm nibbling down near the bottoms. I nibble around 135, buy myself some shares because that's where support has come in in the past. Will it hold? Yet to be seen. But, you know, I'm comfortable because this is a higher probability trade. It's all about finding higher probability trades. A higher probability trades is seeing where support has come in the past. Will the sellers be able to push it? convincingly below 135 down to wherever the next level may be. Maybe here, here's the next support level, maybe 127, 128. But for me, 135 is my level. Hopefully it'll bounce. If not, I hold for the long run because I know in the long run, Walmart will go back up. Okay. Um, what else do we have? We looked at Disney. Um, the healthcare stocks kind of got hit a little bit as well. Some went up, some went down. Bristol Myers went up, Pfizer down, Merck up a little. Healthcare stocks, you know, in the long run, we all need healthcare. These are the companies that make all the drugs for the healthcare to keep you keep you living. So you know, in the long run, these companies are going to go up, but they're all just getting caught up in the noise right now. Um, Verizon still kind of just kicking around. Oh, let's look at PayPal and Square. Let's talk about PayPal and Square, and then we'll we'll call it. Um, you know, PayPal and Square just really getting creamed really hard, really getting hammered. You know, I thought I thought these things would have stopped dropping by now, but they're getting caught up in all the selling. PayPal, you know, getting kind of near oversold levels, but the you know the price action does not look that good. I mean, I'd like to see a real nice bounce, but down here, do you buy more? Do you try to keep bottom picking. 
Um, Square. I, I love the payment sector, the online payment sector. Square, PayPal. You know, these are the the guys that these are the companies that that do the payments for people in small businesses or even larger businesses. I use PayPal for my business. I want to see the company succeed and go up. But look at this channel for Square. Um, you know, until it convincingly gets out of this channel, it's it you know trying to buy bottoms here and hold, and it, it's frustrating. So things are getting hit pretty good. Um, I, I know eventually PayPal and Square will be good buys. Where is that bottom? Don't really know yet, but hopefully it's soon. Anyway, um, I think that's about it as far as what we want to look at. Twitter itself, Twitter, um, you know, been in a downtrend, maybe starting to find itself a little bottom here. Maybe, you know, maybe a little rounded bottom here. Could be good. Like to see it get above the, the downtrending 50-day moving average, about $40 a share. We'll see. Um, what else? Facebook, we looked at Google. I'm not going to look at the the Bitcoin stocks. Uh, Clorox, talked about Clorox. I had to get out. I was long. I got out. And it's kind of meandering down the lows here. Could be a place to, you know, if you haven't got into Clorox yet, maybe bottom pick. You know, maybe buy yourself a few shares, nibble. You know, it's not advice. I'm just telling you. You know, Clorox is a is a, is a a great company. All the household items that we, we need. But... You know, look at the stock. The stock's just been in this downtrend sideways. I thought I had got in here where I told you, uh, um, was it around here? Mid 170s. I thought we were finally breaking out of the the downtrend. It was going up, looked good. And then it just got caught in this nastiness. And I got out. I got out. Had to get out. All right, that's it. Let's take a look at the SPY one more time. Look at the general market. We, you want to look at the general market. Um, might have some more selling come in next week. Depends what's happening geopolitically, inflation, all that. Or we can just say, you know what? There's There's been too much of a sell-off. Buying opportunities are too great. It's time to buy the thing back up. But we're playing light. We're just keeping an eye on things. It's okay to sit on the sidelines sometimes. All right, so that's it for the, for the Saturday synopsis. Let's take a quick look at our website, let you know what we do, smartopsandseller.com. That's our website. We're, we're big on put option selling, selling put option spreads. We're bullish because the market goes up in the long run bullishly. So we want to take bullish strategies. And we, gives our, and we give ourselves a lot of cushion for directional error. And that's how we do it. We're here to hit singles. We're not high flyers. We're not hitting home runs. We're not swinging for the fences. That's not what we do. So... Um, if you want to learn about selling put options and collecting income, sign up, get a free copy, put your name and email address here on our website. Uh, what else do we offer? We have we have our two newsletters right here. Hover your mouse over the services tab. And we also have our one-on-one -on -one coaching that helps you if you're if you're starting out, if you need some more help, you just need to talk to somebody. We're here to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. We've had some really good success with our students. All right, so that's it for me. Um, you know, thanks for watching. I hope it's been helpful. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Send me an email. I, I like hearing from you. I'll, I always try to email you back. All right, that's it for me today. I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.